Hey, what's up, SAT preppers? It's Brian with Radical Prep. Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over practice test number one. This is section four. It's a math section. You can use your calculator. I'm going to be timing myself. So I've got 55 minutes to do 38 questions. I'm going to try and keep pace while giving you guys tips and explanations. And hopefully that way you feel like it's realistic and some of the stuff I'm telling you will actually get you through the test at an accurate pace. So uh, the link for this test is actually in the window below. So you can download that. Do it at your own pace or follow along with me. Either way, whatever helps you score higher, all right? So I'm going to start the timer right now. Three, two, one. Let's start the test. Uh, number one, John runs at different speeds as part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during his workout. On which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing than strictly decreasing? All right, let me just move, up, yeah, move that up a little bit. Um, so we're looking for strictly increasing than strictly decreasing. And if you look on the left side, it says heart rate. So, I mean, it's pretty, I think it's pretty easy to see. It's going up there, and then it's going down there. And that's from 40 to 60. Choice B, you're done. That's it, let's move on. Um, number two. This one says, if y equals kx, where k is a constant, and y equals 24, when x equals 6, what is the value of y when x equals 5. So I see this one and it looks like just kind of like a straight, you know, straight away plug in problem. So they tell me y is 24. And I'm just plugging in. We don't know k, but x is going to be 6. So I'll divide out by 6, divide out by 6, and I get k equals, ooh, not 24. k equals 4. So I can circle that and I can use that now to plug back in, right? So they want to know what is y when x is 5. So we don't know y, but we know k now is 4, and we know x is going to be 5. I'm just plugging into that original equation. So y equals 20. That's it. Easy peasy, beginning of the test. we got to save time, so we got to move on and move fast. All right, number 3. In the figure above, lines L and M are parallel, and lines S and T are parallel. So both op opposite sets and opposite pairs of lines are parallel. If the measure of angle 1 is 35 degrees, what is the measure of angle 2? So something you guys got to know, and it's pretty easy, when you have parallel lines and transversals, all the little angles are equal and all the big angles are equal. So how does that help you? Well, if that's 35 degrees, that's a small angle, right? So that one's 35 degrees and that one's 35 degrees, all right? The other thing you got to know, how many degrees are in a line? This line that I made from there to there. So a line has 180 degrees, so it's just going to be angle 2 plus 35 degrees equals 180. And when you minus 35 from both, minus 35 from both, you get angle 2 equals 145 degrees. That's it, choice D. Just know all the small angles are the same. I think it's called like corresponding angles. That one's equal to that one. These are vertical angles, right? This one is equal to this one. So knowing some of those transversal rules is a, is a good thing to know. Okay, let's go to number four. Um, if 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8x? So this is one of those problems where you just got to know how to translate uh, algebra into words. So a couple of things you should know is... Uh, means equals of means multiply. I should really write, write multiply there, not x, just in case. And uh, is of, and in this case, more means add. Okay? So let's just translate left to right. 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14. We simplify equals 24. We're going to minus 16 from both sides. Oop, minus 16. We get 4x equals 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4. So x equals 2. Now the only thing is, don't get tricked here because, you know, oh, I got 2, I'm done. Yeah, that's how you get stuff wrong on the SAT. Always look at what are you trying to answer. Actually, let's underline it. 8x. So if x is 2, 8x is 16. And you're done. All right, so move on from there. Let's go to number 5. 
We gotta make good time here. Um, number five, this one says, which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association between D and T? All right, so what does it mean to have a negative association? Um, and a strong negative association. So positive associations go up, they're the positive ones. The negative ones go down. I hope you guys, just like slope, right? If it's tightly grouped, if all the data points are really close to one another, that's a strong relationship. So basically we're looking at something that has a lot of data points you know, grouped together going down. Not that one, not that one, not that one. Well, what the heck is left? Ooh. Uh, choice D. It's the only one left. Going down, the points are tightly together. Choice D. That's it. Let's move on. Number six. Okay. A hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in one two decagram container? So it looks like they want us to go from decagrams to grams to milligrams. So let's see. We know, well, firstly, we know two decagrams. I'll just leave it like that. So one decagram is 10 grams. Let's just not even, let's not get too complicated. Two decagrams is, what do you know? 20 grams. Okay, so one gram is 1,000 milligrams, but we have 20 grams here. So we're just multiplying by 20. 20 times 1,000, 20,000, okay? And notice that I didn't do the whole like this over this equals this over that because it's going to waste time. You don't have to do that. If you need to, you can use ratios, but I don't think you really need to for a question like this. And you want to speed ahead, save time for the, the, the back end of the test. All right, number seven we got here. Sorry, I'm trying to fix it. Eh, fill this whole thing in here. Um, rooftop solar panels, installation of five cities. So I'm just reading the top there. The number of rooftops with solar panel installations in five cities is shown in the graph above. If the total number of installations is 27,500, what is an appropriate label for the vertical axis of the graph? So, so far, it looks like they, they want us to figure, or they want us to figure out what, what that is, what we can call it. So I'm going to say this, we're looking for 27,500, right? We don't have units here. What do we want to know? Oh, number of installations in tens, hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands. Well, it can't be in tens. That's too small. And it really can't be in hundreds because we're at 27,000. But if you wanted to test this out and just see it, this is, let's say this was 9,000. Let's say the answer was thousands. 9,000, 5,000, 6,000. I'd say this answer is looking good, right? 4,000, and that one looks like 3,500, okay? So those are going to add up to 27,500. You can't pick tens of thousands because tens of thousands, that's saying nine, but in tens of thousands, that'd be 90,000. So 10, remember, just your unit, your basic unit is 10,000. It's too big. That would be 90,000, 50,000, 60,000, all right? Choice C. All right, good. Let's go to 8. Uh, for what value of n is the absolute value of n minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0? Okay. Well, I guess there's two ways to do this. You could start going to your answer choices and picking out and just plugging in. And that works fine. I, I really don't have any problem with that. The only thing I would say to you guys is, like, what happens when you've got an absolute value? What is the result always? Well, the result is always going to be some positive number, or I guess it could be zero, but it could be zero, zero or a positive number. But you want n minus one and whatever comes out of here plus one to equal zero. So that means this stuff in there has to be negative for this problem. Is that possible? Will I ever get a negative? No. So there's no number that you can put in there to make that expression negative. And if you pop, you know, like say that didn't make sense to you, if you start picking numbers, you know, you could find out that none of those work and you have to go with D. But just keep in mind, it's an absolute value. You're never going to get a number that makes an absolute value negative. All right. Number nine. Okay. 
Um, we have the speed of sound, the speed of a sound wave in air depends on the air temperature. The formula above shows the relationship between A, the speed of a sound wave in feet per second, and T, the air temperature in degree Fahrenheit. So I'm reading this, I'm already getting a little, like, you know when it gets wordy and you start going, oh, what the heck are they? Let's just see what we can figure it out. Which of the following expresses the air temperature in terms of the speed of a sound wave? So what I noticed right away is my equation started off with an A equals, and now everything has what? Everything here has a T equals. Sorry, those aren't sixes, there's this emphasis circles. So everything is T. So my goal for this problem is to get T by itself. So let me do that. Um, plus 1.08T. Sorry, that's a comma right there. So first thing you always do is you do your subtraction and your addition or your subtraction. So that's A minus 1052 equals 1.08T. I'm going to divide by 1.08 divide by 1.08 and that crosses out that's my answer a minus 1052 over 1 1.8 which oh it's right there that's it that's all you gotta do so when you do these problems do your addition and subtraction first always and then your division and multiplication all right and number 10 um, at which of the following air temperatures will the speed of sound be closest to a thousand feet per second? So I like to underline what we're looking for. Thousand feet per second. Well, which one is that? Is that the A or the T? And actually, I got to go back here because um, the way I close the screen off. So they want the speed to be a thousand. So which one of these is your speed? Let's look. The formula above shows the relationship between A, the speed of sound. All right. Well, that means that they want A to be 1,000. So let's put that in. 1,000 equals 1052 plus 1.08 T. All right. So we'll minus 1052. Again, always doing your uh, subtraction and addition first. So it's negative 52 equals 1.08. 0.8 t divide by 1.08 and I don't even have my calculator on me so just give me a second here um, let me just open up what you call here the um, uh, the application the calculator I can't speak so we want one point negative 52 I'll just do 52 divided by 1.08 we get 48.148 all right let's check that out um, there it is negative 48 I just didn't I didn't do the negative but um, we know it's a negative number negative 48 all right so that's the first 10 questions I'm gonna stop the video here and then I'll record the next 10 with the timing keeping going so good luck keep watching we're gonna get those scores higher